dialogue. Hello, may I ask who's calling? Hello, this is Sheila. I have a phone interview with this office scheduled for now. Can I please speak with Mr. Mark Cantor? Ah, of course. Hello, Sheila. This is Mark. It's nice to meet you. Thanks for calling. It's my pleasure. All right, then. Let's get started, shall we? Can you tell me about why you're interested in working at our office? Well, I've been studying politics at university and I am graduating this May. I'm looking for a job that has me intimately involved with the legislative process. I'd like to do research, write speeches, and interact with congressional members. Working in politics and getting to talk with senators and representatives sounds really exciting to me. Great. And can you tell me a little about your previous experiences? Well, my most recent job was working at the school's newspaper as a politics columnist. It wasn't the best in terms of pay, but it was better than my other jobs and gave me a good chance to practice writing about something I liked. Fair enough. What can you say about your strengths and weaknesses? I think that my best trait is that I am very dedicated and driven. However, at the same time, this can be my worst characteristic. Sometimes I have a hard time knowing when to quit. Vocabulary and explanation. The first word we shall see is... Politics. The science and art of government and lawmaking. Politics. Politics. Next is... Graduate. To finish school. Graduate. Graduate. Next, we have... Intimately. Very closely. Intimately. Intimately. Next is... Legislative. Lawmaking. Legislative. Legislative. Next, we have... Senator. Member of the Upper House of the U.S. Congress. Senator. Senator. Next is... Representative. Member of the Lower House of the U.S. Congress. Representative. Representative. Next, we have... Previous. The one before. Previous. Previous. Next is... Shall we? When used with let's, a suggestion to do something. Shall we? Shall we? Next, we have... In terms of... Referring to, to talk about a specific characteristic. In terms of... In terms of... Next is... Dedicated. Never giving up. Dedicated. Dedicated. Let's have a closer look at the usage for some of the words and phrases from this lesson. Sure thing. The first phrase we'll look at is... It wasn't the best in terms of pay. Sheila says this about her first job. We can use in terms of in order to talk about a specific aspect of something even if it's not true about the whole. Here, Sheila is saying that her job, while interesting, did not pay very well. Hmm, so in terms of fun while learning a language, English Class 101 is the best. That's right. What's our next phrase? Mark says, All right then, let's get started, shall we? Sometimes we can say, shall we, at the end of a sentence as a way to transition to a new action or topic. We often use it with, let's, and then, shall we, comes at the end. We can use it as a very polite imperative. Wow, are those the kind of questions that our listeners could expect during a job interview in the States? A lot of the time, yes. These kinds of questions about why you want to apply, your experience, and your strengths and weaknesses are very common for job interviews in the U.S. It really sounds like she's boasting about her skills, though. 
Yeah, a lot of people who hear job interviews in the United States feel the same way. In general, it's perfectly acceptable to talk about your experiences and accomplishments in as positive a way as possible. In a job interview, you're essentially a salesperson. You're selling yourself, so you have to convince the company to buy you. Hmm, I see. And it's not considered rude to talk about yourself in such positive terms? Not at all. But you have to be honest about what you have done and what your skills are. You must never lie about your experiences and skills during an interview. I certainly wouldn't want to do that. Grammar Focus The focus of this lesson is using irregular adjectives in comparison. Now, you probably already know how to use most adjectives. Most either follow the big, bigger, biggest pattern if they are short, or the beautiful, more beautiful, most beautiful if they are complex. Right, but there are a few adjectives that don't follow these rules. Sheila says, It wasn't the best in terms of pay, but it was better than my other jobs and gave me a good chance to write about politics and government. Can you find any irregular adjectives in this sentence? Let's listen again. It wasn't the best in terms of pay, but it was better than my other jobs and gave me a good chance to write about politics and government. Did you guess good, better, or best? If so, congratulations. You found a very important irregular adjective. That's right. Most irregular adjectives are ones that you probably already know, like good, better, best, or many, more, most. If you want to review these adjectives, check out the lesson notes for this lesson. What about less common irregular adjectives? There aren't very many, but one important one is far. Oh, yeah. Far, farther, farthest? Yep. When we are talking about physical distance, we use farther or farthest. Hmm. So let's take the examples of Hawaii, California, New York, and Washington, D.C. to illustrate this. Okay. New York is far from Washington, D.C., but California is farther, and Hawaii is farthest. I see. We have to be careful, though, when we are talking about non-physical distances or abstract concepts with far. Okay. How so? Well, in that case, we don't use farther and farthest. We use further and furthest. Oh, like how? Let's say I'm falling behind in my math class. Then I can say I'm falling further and further behind the rest of the class. It's the same idea as farther, but because it's not physical distance, we use further. Okay, that might be a bit complicated for our listeners, but I hope they understand. Don't worry too much about it. Even many native speakers don't know the difference between farther and further. What about other irregular adjectives? Well, this one is easy. When I have a sister who is older than me, what is she called? Uh, your elder sister. Exactly. When we talk about family members, we don't say older or oldest. We say elder or eldest. Practice for fluency. Instruction. Please read out loud the following sentences marked with gray color, after the beep tone. Try to copy exactly their intonation. Hello, may I ask who's calling? Hello, this is Sheila. I have a phone interview with this office scheduled for now. Can I please speak with Mr. Mark Cantor? Ah, of course. Hello, Sheila. This is Mark. It's nice to meet you. Thanks for calling. It's my pleasure. All right, then. Let's get started, shall we? Can you tell me about why you're interested in working at our office? Well, I've been studying politics at university and I am graduating this May. I'm looking for a job that has me intimately involved with the legislative process.
I'd like to do research, write speeches, and interact with congressional members. Working in politics and getting to talk with senators and representatives sounds really exciting to me. Great. And can you tell me a little about your previous experiences? Well, my most recent job was working at the school's newspaper as a politics columnist. It wasn't the best in terms of pay, but it was better than my other jobs and gave me a good chance to practice writing about something I liked. Fair enough. What can you say about your strengths and weaknesses? I think that my best trait is that I am very dedicated and driven. However, at the same time, this can be my worst characteristic. Sometimes I have a hard time knowing when to quit. This is the end of today's lesson. Thank you for learning English with us. Take your time to review it sometimes. See you on the next lesson of Learn English Through Conversations. Goodbye.